But you know what, bro? Like after the all these years, mm-hmm. I mean, you go through what you're going through in that moment, and it seemed like okay, we got our shit together. But then you see it. You know what was t- twelve years ago? Maybe I don't know ten. To that, I don't know. It was eleven or twelve yeah. years ago. Yeah. So we collaborate on this, and and so many different things have changed. And I I, I don't know, man. It's it's just a it's just a weird state of affairs, man. When you perform as as hard as as you do, as hard as I do, and then to see this, and then to reconnect, and to realize, I wasn't all there, <laughs> and neither were you, <laughs> but here we are. We're, I was like. I, you know, we recorded the concert, so I have it all. Yeah. I filmed it, and so I, I'm going to eventually put it all out, and it'll come out, too. You know what would trip me out the most, too, mm-hmm. was, was the fact that the, the audience, their expectation of something, because they were expecting something out of you that was like, and they were like, what the fuck is this shit, Because <laughs> <laughs> it was a huge, huge... Huge audience with the rock expectation, man. Well, you know, that was the first time I'd ever played solo. But they were still expecting me to play songs that they knew. And then I decide, you know, you know, you can plug in acoustic guitars and stuff. I decided not to do that. I was using all these old instruments. So we mic'd everything. So the volume level in the room was probably about a third of what it would normally be. And because it was so quiet, nobody could talk. It was like, it's like somebody's whispering on stage. If you talk, you're actually louder than the person on sure, stage. Absolutely. So no one could talk. So it was like a tomb level quiet. You could hear people at the cash register like going like yeah. closing the drawer. God, I kind of love that though. And so that was the vibe we played Amazing. in. So he came up like, you know, two thirds of the way through in this very intense quiet. I think both of us were in some kind of a, a strange transition. Mm-hmm. Where... I don't know. I don't know if, it, if it's safe to say that we weren't even trusting our own art at the time. I think, we it's, were, I think it's very accurate. We were pushing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, but I thought it was really, you know, um, it, it really creates a statement of where you were at mm-hmm. and the transitions of where you were going. Yeah, and where you had just come from. Yeah. Where it was just that that element of just being drugged through the f- fucking trenches, coming. Mm-hmm. What are you? What else are you gonna come out with? You know, but but something that is going to be really totally misunderstood because you yourself was in the place where it's like, damn, what the hell? Mm-hmm. You remember it a little? That or, song? No. It's basically the same key as, I mean, the same, um, um, you know, chord of the progressions, just a D minor for me. Yeah, it was like, I was playing like a lot of weird inversions against the D, yeah. so it was like, yeah. 
like free jazz is building order out of chaos mm. but emotionally it's very hard to capture the feeling of chaos when you're playing be pretty yeah 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 you know it's like they, they trying were, to capture yeah. the feeling of violence but in a pretty song it's a, such a strange thing and him playing beautiful flute and this kind of beautiful chord changes yeah. but the subtext is this ominous you know i mean i think that's the key to that whole thing is it vulnerability mm. yeah i was about to lose my mind yeah. but you know what bro like after the all these years mm -hmm. I mean, you go through what you're going through in that moment, and it seemed like, okay, we got our shit together, but then you see it. You know, what was 12 years ago? Maybe, I don't know, 10, 11, I don't know. It was 11 or 12 yeah. years ago. So we collaborate on this, and, and so many different things have changed, and I, I, I don't know, man, it's, it's just a... It's just a weird state of affairs, man, when you perform as, as hard as, as you do, as hard as I do, and then to see this, and then to reconnect, and to realize I wasn't all there, <laughs> and neither were you, <laughs> but here we are. We're, I was like, fuck, man. I think that that's why people are often attracted to performers when they're young, because you're watching them figure it out as they go along. Sure. Right there there's, some, there's something not as attractive about somebody who's got it all figured out. It, it loses a little bit of the high wire sure. act of like... Yeah. Keep playing that one. What was it? What's it? Oh, I was just fucking around. You being up there just by yourself with these antique guitars, with these strange mm. freaking tunings, I, I felt it, man. Mm -hmm. I felt the fucking tension, man. When I got out there on stage, it was like, oh shit, man. What the fuck? I got, I got, I got two flutes with the mi in a minor key, man. I was like, ah, <laughs> oh, shit. Man. I've ever heard a thousand people. It was freaky quiet. It was it, it was like you could hear people breathing quiet. It was pretty bizarre. Well, that's what I'm saying. They also had an expectation. Mm. They didn't know what to do. And mean. so it was almost like a almost a lament, mm. some kind of a, a tragic hero. Mm. You know, it, it's basically the archetype of their whole youthful angst and their youthful uh. youthful. Um, endeavors and everything this album uh -huh. that i just made is the first music i made like that since that period oh sh so the album that's coming out yeah is related to that album in spirit but i never put that album out <laughs> 